Hey, where have you been? <laughs> I know, I know. Maybe I should be the one hearing from you. Hey Juan, where have you been? If you're a follower of The Winding Stairs, you may have noticed that I've been MIA from the podcast for a little bit, right? You might have seen me on social media, you might have seen uh, me on the emails, but I haven't put a podcast out for quite a bit of time. So here we are, a global pandemic later, a whole bunch of life uh, situations later, we're back. And I wanna make sure that I am here for you as we continue our journey up the winding stairs. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Winding Stairs, a program dedicated to Masonic education and the art of self-improvement. I'm your host, Juan Sepulveda, and I thank you for taking the time to join me as we engage in these discussions about becoming a better man through the practice of Freemasonry. On today's episode, I wanna share with you some information that I've come to learn over the past couple of years. Uh, I wanna share some experiences that I've had and I want to share a challenge that I have put upon myself and I wanna invite you to take on yourself. First, I wanna give you a little bit of, of a background from my point of view of what's happened. Why did I take off? Why haven't I been producing podcast episodes for such a long time? And there's a lot for me to share, so I'm gonna be very open with you. Uh, I'm going to share some things that I haven't shared with a lot of people in the past, but I think it's fair that you hear directly from me what's happened and what have I been doing and how come the podcast uh, hasn't had new episodes. Uh, I'll fill you in little by little. But then after that, I wanna share with you something that I'm doing that I think you're gonna be excited about that many of the listeners of The Winding Stairs are gonna find edifying, so I'm, I'm hoping to uh, that it's well received. I wanna start by going back to 2019, early 2020. The last very significant Masonic education thing that I did was back, I wanna say March of 2020, when I went over with the Brothers from the Masonic Roundtable to Tampa. We went to Hillsborough Lodge for a Masonic conference in which we were all speaking. We gave, each one of us gave a presentation on various topics of Freemasonry. It was amazing. It was a great, great event. But while that was happening, there were these rumors about this virus that was taking the world by storm and really had the potential of disrupting society as a whole. Of course, this is not news to you. It was the beginnings of a global pandemic that has taken in the United States close to a million lives. Now, at the time, of course, we didn't know as much information about the virus as we know now. We didn't have the remedies. We didn't have all the, the insight that we have into it. So there was this lingering fear, this lingering nervousness that was just wreaking havoc on everything, on personal lives, on professional lives, on the lives of our brothers in lodges and organizations, churches, you name it. It was, it was very unnerving. So when that event ended, we, everybody went their separate way. Um, of course, I live close enough to Tampa, so for me it was just a, a, a simple drive. But after that, I didn't really engage in putting together Masonic episodes through the winding stairs at all. I still continue to share uh, episodes on the Masonic round table. That was uh, something that I continued to do at the time. But, but things got very, very strange. At the time, I was a senior deacon for Orange Blossom Lodge number 80, which is my, my lodge. If you're ever in the Kissimmee area, if you come see Mickey Mouse at Walt Disney, make sure to sit some time aside, come say hello. We'll be happy to see you. So I was the senior deacon at the time, and of course the senior deacon is, is a position that is very involved in the lodge, is supposed to be there early, often, 
uh, as an officer, supposed to be involved in a lot of different things. And I'll be honest with you, I was nervous about the I was nervous about the virus. I didn't think that a lot of the brothers were taking the virus seriously, which made me even more nervous. I have family members that were um, that had some pre-existing conditions that made them particularly vulnerable to being harmed by by the virus if they were to uh, be contagious with it. So I was trying to be as ve as cautious as I could. Now, fortunately, since 2012, I have been doing Masonic education and Masonic things virtually. I've been putting the podcast, YouTube channel, email list. I had all these different tools at my disposal that I could put to the service of the craft in order for us to continue to stay together and continue to have fellowship, continue to have edifying conversations. So that was a... That was a good arrow to have in my, in my, uh, what is that? The quiver. Yeah. So I resorted to spend more time doing that on my own, spent some time uh, visiting lodges. One thing that happened as lodges began to close their doors, more and more lodges began to solicit the virtual presentations from brothers all around. The brothers from the Masonic Round Table, yours truly, uh, we were virtually traveling all over the world. I went to speak in Portugal, Scotland, England, um, many states in the United States. But it was an effort to keep the brothers together in the middle of something that was really taking a toll in people's health, mentally and physically. We were doing whatever we could in order to still stay in touch with brothers and provide something of value. So my reluctance to meet in person and to uh, potentially expose myself and my family to, to the virus led to me relinquishing my position as the senior deacon of Orange Blossom Lodge. There were a lot of there was a lot of friction. Uh, I'll have to be honest in in that process. It was difficult. It was very challenging. It it tarnished a lot of relationships within my lodge, and I'm happy to say that since things have gotten better when it comes to uh, personal relationships in lodge, but it it was very difficult. I was being very cautious. Not everybody was being as cautious that I would have as it would have made me comfortable. So I made the difficult decision of saying, okay, I, I can't be a part of the, the officers anymore. So I, I gave up my position as a senior deacon, perhaps to somebody who might have been more willing to participate physically in the day-to-day -day, uh, events in Lodge, right? So needless to say, that opened up a lot of time for me to do other things. I'm a, I'm self-employed. I have a business of my own called the Gen the Gentleman's Brotherhood, and I had more time to spend doing that. I had more time to spend with my family who needed me. I had a, a lot more time making sure that we adjusted to all the challenges that came with the world situations, right, and set my family up for for them to be safe, healthy, prosperous, happy. And that's where my attention went. So you might not have seen me in the winding stairs and might have seen me in, uh, in other podcasts and in virtual presentations, but I was really focusing on my family, my business, and myself. The Winding Stairs is made possible by freemasonryart.com the Masonic Art Store where I share the creations that I make. I recently created a Masonic pin display apron where you can proudly show all the pins in your collection. Every pin tells a story. It reminds you of that day where you met some brothers or that day when you had an incredible initiatic experience. If you have your pins confined to the darkness of a drawer, bring them from darkness to light by proudly displaying them in one of our Masonic pin display aprons. To see them and place an order today, go to freemasonryart.com.
Now, it is sad because in the process of dealing with a global pandemic, many of us lost friends. We lost family members. Uh, personally, I did lose a very close family member to COVID. My, I lost various friends. I had friends that went through very scary health moments when it came to, to COVID. But, you know, the majority of us made it through and, you know, things are, things are changing for the better, I think. But needless to say, this whole process over the past couple of years, it, it was challenging. It really took a toll on me and many other people, mentally and physically, emotionally, spiritually. So I'm, I'm happy to see that things are getting, things are getting better. Things are changing in a way that we can adjust and we can feel um, we can f get back to a place of normalcy or start, start acquainting ourselves with this new uh, status for, you know, as some people, this new normal, right? I know some people hate that expression, but it is, it's what humanity is all about. We go through trials, tribulations, and we adapt, we adjust, and we move forward. And that's, that's what we're doing. Now, in, in other things that happened during that time, of course, many lodges were closed. There are lodges that are still closed as we speak. And there are some jurisdictions where they're not going back for a while. And this took an emotional toll on people. When they had an outlet to go and spend time with their friends and brothers on a Thursday night, for example, now they don't have that option anymore. Maybe they're working from home doing everything from home, and they need that escape to come together with other people and feel better, right? So among the things that I did during that time, like I told you, I focused more on my family. I focused on the Gentleman's Brotherhood, which is my business. One thing that you might have noticed is that I'm no longer with the Masonic Roundtable. I am one of the co-founders of the Masonic Roundtable, and I appeared in that in that in that podcast weekly for seven years. So we put together by the time that I left, we had put three hundred and fifty-seven episodes of a Masonic podcast. So, of course, considering my situation with my lodge and some of the the attitudes that I found from many brothers on on social media, I, I was not in a very good place when it came to masonry. I felt like I was disconnected from the Masonic community. I felt annoyed at the way that some people that I admired had decided to behave. I was disappointed with some of the leadership decisions that were made during a time where we needed a strong leadership and we needed strong guidance. I felt that there were many leaders that let us down. And you may feel the same way. You may feel that some of the people in your lodge or your district may have disappointed you with their behavior, with their words, with their actions. But we are in a fraternity whose focus is to help us become better men where we're encouraged to speak wise counsel in the ear of a failing brother. And I don't think we saw that enough. I don't think we saw enough temperance and justice and fortitude in being able to make the difficult decisions. So I was very disappointed in a lot of the things that I, that I saw. And that obviously took a toll. Listen, I'm, I'm being frank with you because I think, I think I owe you that. If you spent so much time with me through the winding stairs, I, I think I need to be fully transparent and honest with you when it comes to these things. Um, the Masonic Round Table is something that I did for a long, long time. I was, like I told you mentally, I was not in a very good place. So when Thursdays, Thursdays rolled around and it was time for me to do the show, it became increasingly difficult for me to put on a game face and 
have a good attitude about it and, and give my brother something that was worth listening to. That was challenging. So I had to make the difficult decision that if I was not really enjoying my time in the Masonic Roundtable and I wasn't giving my absolute best to the brothers who had come to trust us, it was only fair that I decided to no longer participate in the Masonic Roundtable. So as of episode 357 of last year, I'm no longer with the Masonic Roundtable. Now, they continue strong. They continue to produce uh, content that's edifying, that's intended to help brothers in the journey. And I encourage you to continue to support them, continue to watch them and, and get involved with it. But I, I had decided that I no longer, it didn't make sense for me to continue to be a, a, a part of it at, that, at the time. So now here we are. It's been quite a while since I left the Masonic Round Table. I had stopped doing podcasts and I found a renewed sense of purpose when it comes to Freemasonry. I felt that it was important for me to come back to Lodge now that it's, you know, we all have our vaccinations, we have a better understanding on how this whole virus works. Even though it's become an endemic in our in our society, we have better ways of handling it. So I feel way more comfortable coming back physically to uh, to travel and speak and go to go to lodge and do a lot of these things. So how did I challenge myself? Well, what I thought of doing is, okay, since the early two thousand and twenty, I haven't been able to spend enough time in lodge with my brothers, I haven't, I haven't been involved in our fraternity at all. I've been very distant from, from masonry. Since I've rekindled my relationship with the craft and I've been very excited about implementing more lessons into my life, uh, spending time with the brothers and learning more from them, I thought it would be great if I could start little by little going back to Lodge, becoming more regular in my in my visitation. Not just to my lodge, but there's so many amazing lodges in my vicinity that I can go travel to and spend time with my brothers. We have a very solid Masonic district here in, in the Florida area. Uh, we belong to the 16th Masonic district. And there are many lodges here, many brothers that I want to reconnect with. So that's what, I, that's what I'm doing. I challenge myself, I need to get back into the lodge. I need to get back and spend time with my brothers. There's so much we can learn from one another. We're so fortunate too that we belong to a fraternity whose members are great men with great, great life experiences. People from whom we can learn incredibly uh, large amounts of information. So we should value that, right? So the challenge that I put upon myself is to try to do something within the fraternity with my brothers every single week. Make sure that the weeks that I have lodge meetings that I'm attending, that I'm spending enough time before having dinner with my brothers and perhaps afterwards enjoying a conversation. And I did, I've been doing so for the past few weeks. And I'll tell you this, last week, when I went to Lodge, I went early enough so that I can spend a good amount of time with brothers. And I got to sit with a group of entered apprentices that are new to the Lodge. And I had an opportunity to break bread together with them, enjoy a great conversation, get to know them a little bit better, give them an opportunity to know me because I had been absent. So it was very fulfilling. Not only that, we had a lot of visitors we were uh, honored to have our good friend, Josker Porschke and brother Joe Porschke, his father. Uh, brother Josker Porschke, if you follow me on social media, you'll know that he had a concert of Mason Masonically inspired music. He crafted a whole concerto that is inspired by the ritual of Masonic, uh, of Masonic ritual in Florida, unique. And we had the pleasure of having him visit the, mon the Monday after the concert. 
And he sat in lodge with us. He played some tunes for us. It was incredible. And on top of that, at the end of the meeting, about seven of us stayed behind and engaged in some very, very fulfilling conversations. We talked about the differences in rituals between North Carolina, Puerto Rico, Florida, uh, Georgia, things that we didn't know we shared with one another. And it was just so fulfilling to spend time, uh, as they say, how, uh, how beautiful it is for the brothers to come together in, in fellowship. So I started implementing that. And I can tell you that how I feel today, in contrast to how I was feeling in the summer of 2020, it is, it's a drastic difference. So I want to extend that challenge to you. Have you, been, have you been distant from Lodge since after the beginning of the pandemic? Have you been pushed aside because of your business responsibilities or your work responsibilities? Has it been very demanding uh, for you to be, take care of your family? For whatever reason, you may not have been spending enough time in Lodge or with your Masonic brothers. My challenge to you is this, get back to Lodge. If you can go safely, if you can be cautious and make sure that you're uh, following the, the necessary protocols to, to stay safe, can you go to Lodge? And if you do, can you go with a state of mind that is going to allow you to really derive a great benefit from the fellowship and the lessons learned and observing the ritual and, and really making a difference in, in the lodge. Take me up on that challenge. If you're willing to take me up on that challenge, I invite you to let me know in the comment sections, wherever you found this, whether it's the podcast or YouTube, if you found it on social media, let me know. Are you gonna do it? Have you been doing it? Did you never stop going to lodge? Let us know how this whole uh, past two years have been for you. I'll, I'll be interested in reading that and engaging in conversation with you. Coming back to Lodge is something that I'm sure many of the brothers that listen to this will find fulfilling, especially since the acute isolation that we faced through the world events that, that we encountered. This is something that has the potential of really making a difference for us and for the brothers that we come in contact. Take me up on that challenge. Let's get back to Lodge. Let's get back to the fraternity and make sure that this fraternity is as strong as it's ever been. And we can become the best men that we can by implementing the lessons of Freemasonry. I wanna thank you for taking the time to join me in this conversation. I wanna hear from you. Uh, if you don't follow me in social media, I've been really active lately on TikTok of all places. So follow me at The Winding Stairs. You can find me on Instagram at The Winding Stairs. You can find me on Facebook. Just do a little search on The Winding Stairs and join the conversations that we're, we're having there. On Twitter, Winding Stairs 33. I'd love to hear from you. Now, until next time, may your steps be firm and your path illuminated as we continue our journey up the winding stairs. <laughs>